After decades of dealing with this issue, it's kind of really surprising to get 19 senators to co-sponsor this and uh, have be broad bipartisan support. 11 members of this committee are co-sponsors. Lawmakers are beginning to realize in order to have a sustainable supply of meat, we need transparency in the marketplace and protect the market from collapsing when there's supply chain disruptions. I think having right here testimony from North Dakota and Mississippi uh, has wide, shows wide geographic support. The most vocal support comes from my Iowa cattlemen. During my county meetings, I hear about the lack of competition all the time. This bill 430 is true compromise. Many producers in the Northern Plains want more intervention to ensure a robust cash market. These producers support a bill that would even go further than what Fisher and I have compromised. While we also hear from producers who do not want any government intervention, so the bill doesn't go far enough for some organizations and it goes too far for some others. For that reason, I think that we have something that ought to fly here. So I'm going to start out with Mr. Ruffin. Uh, you tell us the loss of the cow calf uh, ranchers in Mississippi. The same is true of most states in rural America. Uh, and rural America is being hollowed out by consolidation and lack of competition. What do you say to economists who say there's not an issue with price discovery or price transparency? The fact that I can't get but one bid for my cattle anymore. I mean, that's, that's true. Uh, the fact that producers in my area are going out of business. I have a group of young people who are in a production group that we pool cattle together and, and we are able to get market prices a little higher because that we're, we, we can sell in truckload lots, Senator. Those individuals uh, are, that's one of those groups that I used to get prices from four or five different commission sellers, I mean buyers. Now I get one and, and, and I see them dropping off the list. They yeah. dropping off the list. In Iowa, you might get one bid, but you don't deliver your cattle for 30 days as well. So you can imagine feeding cattle for another at 7 or $8 for corn isn't nice. I'm going to go to Ms. Zitch. Uh, you, uh, I want to open by saying that we have these fires at Holcomb, uh, all the way then the panic, pandemic disruptions we have. Now labor shortages, producers are no stranger to adversities, and it seems like we're having so-called black swan events every year instead of every 100 years. When the market is working efficiently, then producers up and down the supply chain make money. But when these black swan events happen, like we've seen in the last five years, it seems like the smaller independent producer and on the cash market gets damaged the most. The lack of resiliency in the supply chain. Uh, Congress, uh, you know, spent eight and a half million dollars to help uh, cattle producers. So my question to you, being a producer that's most similar to Iowa cattlemen, can you tell the committee how these black swan events impact and continue to harm your business? Thank you, Senator Grassley. Yes, I can. Um, I've got a very recent case. Um, we sold our, we sold through the sale barn um, about a third of our cattle, and unfortunately, it was shortly after uh, Ukraine had invaded or was it was invaded. Um, we didn't have a lot of choice in the matter. Um, we had, had some storms the week before that um, shut down all the sale barns, and um, of course, everybody knows that we all, uh, as farmers and ranchers, a lot of us have bills due at a certain time of the year. Um, based on when our cattle sales are. So 
and with the and the price and the feed and the price of feed and all that stuff that that goes into them, um, it was time for those cattle to go as a you know, as a live product. We don't have that option of putting them in a bin um, like we can with our grains and and making a, a better choice later. Um, with that being said, we probably lost about twenty to thirty thousand dollars that day um, at the sale barn just because of what happened um, over overseas, and uh, that happens a lot. It, it's it's yeah. most of the cattle buyers that day. Um, that were there were actually on their phones or either reading a book or playing games. Um, it, it was pretty disheartening when you only had about two buyers that were actually buying and, and uh, um, even then were only doing it about half-heartedly uh, just because they knew they could kind of take, take advantage of what the market was that day. Um, we realized that we do sell in a worldwide market, that we have to be aware of what's going on in the world, um, but sometimes it does feel like we're being taken unfair advantage of um, at, at different times. So yes, we we're very, very cognizant of, of what's disruptions. My time's up. I've had a couple questions for you, Mr. Tiffany. I'll submit them for answer in writing.